to say that I was swapped as a baby, you know, in the cradle all of two days before they decided that they didn't want me. Apparently the lucky fucker that I was swapped with was beautiful. The nun said he was a stunning baby with a great big smile and brains to burn. Unlike me, a useless child destined to be a brute. Backward, like the backward village I was born in. See, I was part of the exodus of unwanted babies chucked into a home before I could open my eyes. My earliest memory is of the nuns clawing at me in wonder. Look, he's a changeling. <gasps> Look at the mark on the back of his neck. <gasps> In the home, the nuns had their favourites and their not-so-favourites. My mother's parting gift was reason enough for me to be in the latter. Wash them floors. Wipe them walls. Scrub them pats. I was the boy Cinderella. Only without the pumpkin carriage. And the mice in that place could certainly not talk. Never mind sing. As I moved along the floor slowly, with my bucket and rags, I used to imagine that I was this serpent, a glorious snake, that ate and devoured every woman in its way. I didn't like women at the time. I know that sounds wrong. Why should I? All it ever done to me was scrape and kick and abandon. The slaps, the wounds, the rotten names, all in the name of God. And I was one of the lucky ones. I got to live. Hundreds of babies were dead and discarded like the flies that squat from the windowsills. There's nothing godly about being told you're ugly. A mistake, a disgrace. There's nothing holy about being made to f shit yourself with fear. I couldn't lift my head. I was heavy with the weight of certainty that I was destined to become nothing more than a weight and a stain on society. I used to hear children playing in the far off distance, the wind bringing me their laughter and joy, like a cruel joke. Why didn't I have a family? What was wrong with me? I remember looking into the lake, thinking it'd be easier just to drop and sink like a pearl down to the bottom of the ocean. Maybe then I could bypass this prison sentence. The days in that place weren't days at all. More like random blurry hours chasing each other's tails. I could only make sense of things by the events, not by the dates. One day I do remember, it was when I was ripped out of my bed and told to dress myself in this stupid outfit. <laughs> the stiffness of that short collar, I can still feel it now. The starch cutting into my neck and these trousers that were at least four times too big for me. I watched as none of the other children were made to dress. I was too scared to ask, but my eyes must have gave something away because one of the nuns came up to me and said, It's your mother. She's come to see you. <laughs> my mother. My mammy. All I've ever known of her was the vision I had made in my childhood brain. 
a creature with hair coming out of her nostrils and boils on her back and horns on her head and teeth that could kill you with one bite. Instead, there was this pretty blonde lady with an American accent standing over me like an angel. Do you know who I am? I didn't answer. I couldn't lift my eyes to meet hers. I stared at her shadow on the floor. I'm your mammy, Joseph. I'm sorry that I left you here. I had to go away. But my life is different now. And so is yours. I've come to make everything better. But I'm the changeling, the freak. What did she want with me? What about the other fella? Was he not better? And what happened to him? Here, have one of these. She handed me this, what I now know is a Twinkie bar. The soft texture and treacle was too much for me. I was raised on overcooked cabbage and slop. <coughs> it met the lump in my throat and I began to heave. <coughs> what is this shit? Oh, you don't like it? Don't worry. There's lots of lovely things like that in America. You will have everything you ever dreamed of over there. I looked at the nuns in the hall, <laughs> smiling their tooty grins. They couldn't wait to get rid of me. <laughs> Take him. The undergrown child that pissed in his bed every night and couldn't carry the laundry. <laughs> Take him. He's for free. I ran my tongue along this little stone that I'd found while I was doing one of the gardening jobs. Every time I touched it, I used to imagine that it brought me to a place that only Superman could go. I still have it. See? Look. <laughs> it was my only companion through many long nights of no sleep. I held it tight as my mother combed my hair to the side and tried to give me a hug. We walked down the long corridor, my feet dragging. The one nice nun, Sister Bernadette, ran towards me and held me close. Now, Joseph, it's been a pleasure knowing you. Keep learning them French lessons. You're going to go far in this world, Joseph. I think I'd secretly imagined that she was my real mother. The thought of leaving her and the only semblance of a home, it winded me. Started to cry. Now, Joseph, said my mother, tomorrow you'll be waking up in the land of the free. But I didn't want to hear from her. She was a stranger. And although her blood ran through my veins, so did her abandonment. Eventually, my little bruised hands let go of Sister Bernadette and I was sweeped into a big black car. You'll get to meet your new father. We have a ranch with horses. Would you like to ride horses? 
Your future is going to be so amazing. You'll never be lonely again. And that was it. The beginning of my new life. Staring at me. Calling me. Like this magic stone. Maybe I'm not a changeling after all. Maybe I'm Superman. Not the boy made to be punched and kicked. But a hero in waiting.